Hey everyone, it's me here, Kimmel, back here with another video. And today I want to discuss portable hole saw storage. In November of 1989, I went into business for myself as a remodeling contractor. I had worked for other local contractors for nine years and it was time. I went into business with my best friend and we hit the ground running. We had no lack of work. One of the things we did a lot of was kitchen and bathroom remodeling. And hole saws are usually a part of that kind of remodeling. And I wanted to organize my hole saws so that I knew where they were, so that I could carry them in some sort of a container, put them in the back of my truck, take them to the job site, something that would take a lot of abuse, something that would last me for my career. And the idea I came up with, it's not rocket science, but it has proven to be a very good idea. It has done exactly what I needed it to do, and it will continue to do so. And in fact, in this video, after I show you the, uh, the box that I created, I'm going to update it. I'm going to bring it into the 21st century with a little uh, different approach to organizing the whole saws. Let me uh, just give you an overview here of this uh, idea that I had over 33 years ago and which has served me very well. This uh, box that I'm about to show you carries very easily because I have bungee cord handles like you see right there and they hold the box down low you get the center of gravity of a box like this down with a with a little bit of length to your handle and it's easier to tote around okay so this box is carried with these bungee cord handles which are held in place with uh, a trim washer and a screw one in each i drilled holes here with the intention of putting two screws and trim washers in each, but I never did it. And I did, turns out I didn't really need to. So that is held up well, these bungee cords and that arrangement. I have uh, corner guards, brass corner guards that I bought in retrospect. I would not uh, buy those and put those on again. I actually lost one here, and uh, but the others have, have stayed on there. Yeah. Okay. The Hasp here, the closure hasp has worked out great. Excellent. I haven't had to lock it. I mean, that would be kind of ridiculous, right? To lock a small box with the handles on it. But the idea that you could turn this and it's secured. Yeah, that was the idea. It is held up well. I'm going to give you the measurements here, the uh, outside measurements. The box is made out of three quarter inch lumber core plywood plywood that I had and uh, the sides here are also lumber core 21 and a quarter inches that way 14 inches that way and three and a half inches that way okay I made the box then I cut out the two halves on the table saw so when I look at this it appears, because I've forgotten, but it appears that I rabbited all the way around the three quarter inch top and bottom and then glued in these side pieces. I don't see any uh, nails or screws or anything like that. I think I just glued this together. Let's take a look inside. Oh no, uh, one more thing before we get into the inside of the box. These hinges right here, these uh, just inexpensive two and a half inch butt hinges, these have worked fine. The box opens all the way over and they stick out though. They stick out. I've always put this in the garage or in a, uh, you know, a place where we have plywood, no finished floor, or it's been in the back of my truck. So that hasn't been a problem. This will go all the way over like that. Okay. And here we have the hole saws. There's one that kind of fell out of place. The idea here is that I bought hole saws as I needed them. All right. And these blue ones here, Blue Mole, I don't know if Blue Mole still sells hole saws. These are the 33 plus year old hole saws. These are what the local lumberyard carried. And 
I have recently bought Milwaukee Hole Dozer and uh, yeah, this one right here, this uh, Lennox. And they're, they're made better. These are better hole saws. Quite impressive, actually. I had a large, large one here. It was four, I think four and a quarter inches. And I, I warped it years ago. It was one of these blue ones. It didn't have the stiff back like these, uh, these newer ones I just showed you have. And it warped. And I never needed another one, so I never replaced it. I've got the, uh, what is this? A mandrel. I believe we call these the mandrel. And uh, I found a screwdriver one day that actually fit that screw perfectly, which is what you always want when it comes to a flathead screwdriver. So uh, that stays in the box. This is a newer one I recently bought. And what I did is I put the mandrel in, I adjusted the bit so that it was just barely sticking out below the teeth. And uh, I used, originally, I used my drill press. I figured where I had my center, I put this in the drill press and I put it, uh, I, I drilled down in, sawed down in, just enough to create a little pocket for the teeth to go into, okay? And the drill press is the right tool for the job. This is all going to change. This is all going to be better, as you're going to see shortly. The thing that I want to uh, point out is that one inch of uh, depth approximately there and here. Yeah, one inch, and that's a good size. Now for the improvement. This is where we bring in the Kaizen foam. You probably know about Kaizen foam. Great stuff, perfect, perfect for a whole saw update here. Now, I bought this Kaizen foam uh, a while back, and I'm gonna show you what I bought it for. I bought it very specifically for Whizbang splinter removal kits. I got a video about this. I wanted to make splinter removal kits for each of my three sons, for their family, for a Christmas gift. So I bought this big sheet of Kaizen foam just to make these little, these little kits. The idea is that they go in the bookcase near the kitchen, for, in my instance, I don't know where my kids put them, but wherever they put them, the report is, Dad, we use that a lot. But anyway, there it is. There's the splinter removal kit with the Kaizen foam. Got everything we need. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. So, uh, I cut out a piece of Kaizen foam to fit in this box. And this foam is inch and a quarter. Now you will recall that my interior space here was one inch and one inch or two inches total. And this foam is an inch and a quarter. So it's going to fit in here and stick up a quarter of an inch approximately. It's going to, this is going to go in here, of course, as you will see, but I just wanted to show you that it's going to fit and, it's, and, and explain that it's gonna stick up just a little bit. Here you can see masking tape. And the masking tape there is for me to write on. When I cut this out of the bigger piece, I needed to be able to see my line. So I put the two inch masking tape on there, used my square, and I cut the Kaizen foam with my Stanley 10499, the old style, not the new one. I've got a video on that. If you haven't seen it, you'll wanna check that out. So yeah, there we go. Now I've figured out my layout right here, and I've got a little mark where each one of these is going to be drilled into the Kaizen. I've got a spot up here for that four, four and a quarter inch hole saw if I ever get another one or another size. What I'm gonna do is go drill these holes with my drill press. And Viola, there it is. Now I just gotta pick this masking tape off very carefully. Okay, that's done. And I'm going to friction fit this in here. I could, and I might yet, use some spray adhesive to hold it to the wood there, or I may use speed tape, double-sided tape. Good stuff right there. But I, this'll do for now, and we'll get our hole saws where they go. Get our just right screwdriver in there and the, the mandrel. 
Yeah, look at that. That is exciting. I'm very happy with this. All right, don't leave quite yet because I got a bonus feature for you. You'll notice along here that this hole saw right here has shiny teeth. And that's because I sharpened those teeth. And I have never sharpened a hole saw in my life. And I hardly knew what I was doing, but I watched a YouTube video and the guy was using one of these. And I thought, wow, that's way too extreme for me. So I decided to use my Dremel tool and this easy lock grinding wheel. There, we're in focus. This thing worked really well. Okay, it goes on one of these things. Okay, it's, it's one of those. And, and this, of course, is the Dremel. You know what a Dremel looks like, but if you have never seen one of these little keyless chucks on a Dremel, please take note. This little uh, addition is a real time saver. You know, these Dremels come with this wrench here, and that's a pain. But with this, this keyless chuck here, it's very easy, very easy to get that tight and hand tight, ready to go. So what I did was I put the whole saw in, in uh, the, the mandrel and I clamped it in a vise on my workbench. And I just, I put my safety glasses on and my hearing protectors. My objective was to get these teeth, which were rounded, to a point. Go down into the gullet and up. Into the gullet and up. And th these are not perfect, but they're better. Darn focus. And the, the cutting action of this has improved multiple hundreds of percent by my amateurish Dremel tool grinding. So if you've never if you've never sharpened a hole saw, get the Dremel tool, get that wheel right there, and give it a try. You will be amazed what you can do. All right? I got links down in the uh, description, Amazon links to uh, some of these things. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.